Hello. This year I've been trying to read the Bible in a year and one of the best things about this is redisco rediscovering some of the little stories I'd forgotten about. I was recently reading in 2 Kings chapter 5 and came across the story of the healing of Naaman. I don't know if you remember the story so I'll try and whiz through and summarise it. Naaman was a powerful military commander of the King of Aram's army but he also had leprosy. Um, the Aramite army had taken captive a young Israelite girl and she was a servant to Naaman's wife. And this servant girl encouraged Naaman to go to Elisha the prophet because she was convinced that he would heal her. So Naaman, desperate for healing, went to see Elisha. But Elisha didn't even come out of the house to see him. He sent a message saying that Naaman should bathe seven times in the Jordan. Naaman, a very important military man, was incensed. Elisha couldn't even be bothered to speak to him face to face. And what's more, there were better rivers in Damascus, much better rivers than the Jordan. So he went off in an angry huff. Thankfully, his servants managed to persuade him to give it a go. And he dipped in seven, seven times in the Jordan and was miraculously healed. And then this guy came to faith in God. This powerful man from an enemy country believed in the God of Israel. I'm going to read a couple of verses from 2 Kings chapter 5. Verse 15 says, Then Naaman and his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. And in verse 17 he says, Your servant will never make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God but the Lord. I think this is just amazing that this Gentile man came to faith, such a strong faith in Yahweh, the God of Israel. I've heard it preached on a few times this passage, but generally the slant that I've heard on it is the need for humility and that Naaman's pride nearly got in the way of him being healed. But what struck me reading it more recently was the role of the little servant girl. What did the little servant girl do? Well, she was there, just there in her everyday situation, doing her job as a, a slave, a servant of, of Naaman's wife. But she spoke out. She said what she believed, that Elisha could heal Naaman. And just these simple words expressed from an innocent faith had an absolutely massive impact. A great, powerful leader came to faith. So I want to encourage you today that God wants to and can use you, he can use me, he can use any of us, whoever we are, wherever we are. I was particularly struck by three things that might have held the girl back, but they didn't. I just want to highlight these quickly. The first was her status. She was young, but this didn't stop her speaking out and being used. And that made me think of um, Timothy in the New Testament, who Paul encourages to get on and serve God even though he's young and this made me realize that God can use children and young people he wants to use children and young people and he also wants to use those who are young and inexperienced in the faith then the slave girl was female in that society that meant that she was extremely downtrodden nobody would have any time or respect for a female but God used her and even today, sadly, in our society in the UK, women can often be held back in many ways from a lack of confidence, a lack of self-worth, or just feeling that people are less likely to listen to them because of their gender. But God wants to use women. He wants to use us and will use us if we give him the opportunity. Then the girl was a slave. She had no position, no rights at all. She was essentially somebody else's property. God wants to use those at the bottom of the heap. Society may not regard them highly, but the unemployed, the poor, the uneducated are just as capable of being used in God's purposes as anybody else. And the last thing about the girl's status, she was a foreigner. So in a sense, what she was doing was cross-cultural evangelism. She wasn't afraid to speak out, even though she was of a, a different race and a different culture. So the first thing there was status. The second thing was the girl's situation. She'd been through a hugely difficult and traumatic experience. She'd been 
presumably treated abuse, abusively. She may have been raped. She'd been taken captive in a, a raid on her home, home country. She'd been separated from her family, presumably permanently, and sold into slavery. And now she had to adjust not only to life in slavery, but to her whole new country and culture. But that didn't stop her being used by God either. I would have thought they were fairly good excuses for not having personal evangelism top of your priority list. But God still used her. Sometimes we may feel our situations are just so overwhelming that we're of no use to God. And in my experience, there are times when maybe we just need to rest in God and let him hold us when we're struggling. But he can use us when we're in the middle of our, our struggles and trials as well. We don't have to wait for God to sort out the mess in our lives before he can use us. And the third thing that struck me about the girl, about the slave girl, was her attitude. We don't know a great deal about her, it's only two or three verses, but what we do know is that she wasn't resentful or unforgiving or selfish about keeping God's power, God's healing power to herself. She shared it with her enemies. She actually so easily could have been unforgiving and thinking, well, I'm not going to help Naaman get healed. His, his army took me into captivity. But she, she doesn't feel like that. And I find that really challenging. I'm not sure that I'd have been anywhere near so generous. So to summarise, what the slave girl did was simple. She pointed somebody in need towards God, but it was also profound and had a huge effect. God used her just where she was, just as she was, but in very challenging circumstances. And I think this is a real encouragement for us. God can use us whatever, wherever, whoever. And it's also a challenge. What's stopping us being used by God? Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the many stories of the Bible from which we can learn so much. Thank you for this young slave girl who spoke out despite her difficult circumstances. Thank you that you can use us too in your eternal purposes, whoever we are, wherever we are, whatever our circumstances. Amen.